What's up everybody? My name is Cap the Everyday Gamer and today I'm going to bring you a tutorial over redstone. I talked about doing it for a little while and so I thought I would do it. And instead of just walking you through different kinds of redstone devices, I thought I would do it a couple different ways. One, to tell you and to uh, demonstrate to you and two, to allow you to download this world. I created this sort of uh, testing center, if you will, and it uh, goes through and explains all the different logic gates, has some information, I put up signs explaining how each piece works, and uh, that way you can actually walk around and see it yourself, because you can only see so much in a video. So for what you don't get in the video, you know, download the world, walk around, try it out. Um, I'll put the download link in the video description. Anyway, this tutorial is going to cover basics and uh, the intermediate level stuff. I'm not going to try and get into too much advanced stuff just because it doesn't apply to everybody. But the basics of redstone is, it's uh, found in ore form in these blocks right here. You have to have an iron pickaxe or better, so, you know, diamond or something stronger than iron basically to get it. And it'll give you four little redstone dust pieces like this. Now, redstone's powered by any kind of normal power switch device, like a lever, a button, pressure plate. You can put another redstone torch down, and it'll actually turn it on. Now, redstone itself will only stay powered up to 15 blocks. As you can see, as you get further down here, it turns into this darker maroon color. Well, the darker the color, the less power it actually has. And so when it gets to the end of it, you have to use a repeater to extend it, and it'll go an additional 15 blocks. Now these repeaters have four different settings. Every time you click it, it changes between one, two, three, and four clicks. And each one of the little tick marks on there delays it by 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and 0.4 seconds there. So if you're wanting to like delay your signal for a full second, you'd put three of these on there in a row and set two of them to the fourth setting for 0.4 seconds and then put the third one to the second setting for 0.2 setting seconds. And there you have it. Now something else of noteworthy that you need to know is, is that redstone occupies the space that it's sitting in, not the block it's attached to. So I put this here as just a demonstration here. So this redstone torch right here is actually considered part of this space right here, the empty space, not the block it's attached to. So when you're using that as a, uh, a building mechanism, I mean you need to know that when you're actually building so that you don't try and put stuff on top of it. But on the flip side you can also see how this works out. So I got the redstone there coming down just a little stairwell here and this one redstone torch is powering that. It's able to conduct the power through this block to what's on top of it here. So that's kind of nice. It allows you to do different kinds of devices and be able to hide things underground. So now I'm just going to show you a few of the basic gates here. Now, uh, you know, this black path is just the walkway to go between them here. Now, this is your basic input section here. This is your standard input here. It's just got a switch on the other side of a block, redstone going down to a piston here. You flip the switch on, the piston comes on. That's the basic, the most basic form of connectivity there. And that's all there is to that. Now, a not gate, or what's called as an inverter, is just the opposite there. When the switch is powered on, the device turns off. And the reason why is because you have this torch on the other side, which takes up this space here, activates this here, and goes that way. All major gates in the game are made up of a combination between standard inputs and inverted inputs. And you'll see as we're going through this that that's basically it. These are the two main kind of inputs. This is the next major gate that's uh, most, most used by a lot of people. It's just called an AND gate. And basically what it means is both devices or both inputs have to be on for it to actually do anything. You can flip one switch and it doesn't actually do anything. But you flip both switches and the device actually activates. Turn off just one switch and it goes back. Now the example a lot of people use for um, why they would do this is say like a security door. Let's say um, instead of this little lever here you put a button. So in and then that way you have this one switch here and say okay so as long as this switch is on I can push the button and activate the door but if I turn this switch off which you could have hidden somewhere then they could walk up all day long and push this little button and it wouldn't do anything so that's how a lot of people do that and it's basically just you know uh, two levers here with two redstone torches and redstone dust connecting them and then a redstone torch on the back side acting as an inverter so that as long as these are on, this one stays off. 
And that's how that actually functions. And that's just called an AND gate, meaning that both input A and input B have to be on. Now, in the world, this blue wool here, I connected these between the different sections you'll see down there. And that means that they're basically opposites of each other, but that they're related. They're built the same way. They just work in opposite manners. As that's an AND gate, this is called a NAND gate, or some people call it a, a NOT AND gate. Whereas that one, as long as both devices are off, the device is off. But this one, as long as both devices are, as both inputs are on, the device is off. So, as long as both of them are off, I'm sorry, as long as both of these are actually on, the device will stay off. But as soon as you turn one input off, it turns the device on. You'd use it for a similar manner, just like with the other one. Like I said, these are just opposites to each other. The only thing missing is that there's no redstone torch here. And that's the big difference between an AND gate and an AND gate. Okay, moving on. The next kind of major gate is an OR gate. This is device. This is so that you can use either device. You don't. You can use both. You can use either. It doesn't matter. Now, where this is useful is if you have a, you know, a door or a room or something with more than with one entrance, and you want to be able to control how to get in and out of it from more than one direction. So basically, it doesn't matter as long as one switch is on. It's uh, it'll power the device. Now, the one reason you, I have repeaters right here is because if you put just basic redstone there, it will function. But you have a chance for a malfunction because as soon as you power this, it'll go up all the way around and it'll actually put power to this one too, which you don't actually want. You want to be able to turn them off independently, so by having the repeater there, it stops the signal. So that's an OR gate. And the related to that is called a NOR gate, or a NOT OR gate. It's just the opposite. As long as either device is, or as long as either input is off, the device is on. So you can see, both inputs are off, but the device is still on. It's the same concept as the other one, except for you got an inverter here. And that's a NOR gate. The last major kind of gate is called an XOR gate. Um, that's just how it's pronounced. It means of uh, exclusive OR, I believe that's what it stands for. Yeah, exclusive OR. What that means is, is uh, either device will actually turn it on here. So you can flip this one and it'll do it. You flip that one, it turns it off. The best example I have for this in like real world that you can relate to is, do you have a light or a fan or something in your house that, um, like a garage light basically, that's got two different switches? You know, you can flip one, it'll turn the light on. You flip the other light, it'll turn it off, vice versa. And this is just a series of inverters and connectivity here. This is one of those that you'd be better suited to actually download and look at, just to see how it actually works. The most common used uh, example I have for this in Minecraft would be, let's say you have a, a bridge going over some, you know, a chasm or some lava or something that's, um, you know, you flip a switch to raise so you can cross. When you put this kind of switch in there on opposite ends of the bridge, and that way, no matter which way you're coming from, you can activate and deactivate the bridge without having to worry about it. And then the opposite is just the X NOR gate. It does the exact same thing except for, you know, just backwards. See? You see the difference? That piston's up, this one's down. And those are the main gates. And now there's a bunch of different kinds of logic gates you can create, and there's some way more advanced than this. Um, so these are just the ones I wanted to show you. And again, I'm going to put this world up for download so you can check it out. Now, there's two other kinds of devices that are real popular that you can use with uh, redstone here. The first one is a pulser. And what you have is just two blocks across from each other. Redstone connecting these two pieces, a torch here, torch there, stone on top, one in the middle. And it's basically just the same thing on the other side. You can see they're opposites of each other. And what this does is you can see how it's got this little flickering pulse here. And it will continue to run for a long time. And occasionally, every once in a while, you might see it burn out, but it's kind of rare. And this is basically what it does, is it provides pulsing power to something. Say like you have this um, dispenser here. See, I put arrows in it right now. You flip the switch just once, it'll fire one arrow. Every time it gets power, it'll fire just one arrow. But, you connect it with um, a power source here. 
flip the switch, and now it shoots like a machine gun. Turn it off. And sometimes you have some bugs and stuff where it does that, but that's the basic concept here. Turn it on, it's a full machine gun. So you could turn it into a little trap, basically, by putting a pressure plate on there. So that's what a pulsar is used for. It can use for generating light sources or whatever. You could put a redstone lamp here and just have a little disco light. But this is what a pulsar is. The next major kind of device is called a five clock. Now this is something you would make if you're needing to have a uh, like a timer, basically. You can see how it's set up here. It's got five blocks and kind of a, uh, well, this kind of pattern here. Redstone torches on opposite sides all the way around. And then when you connect it, you can see it actually pulses at the pulse at the rate of one time per second. So you go 1001, 1002, 1003. And this is used a lot for timing, um, they're doing it for games, um, if you're using it for an automated kind of system like a, a cobblestone dispenser or something, this is what it can actually be used for. But that's the basic concept. You can also do it with repeaters instead of using the little blocks here. Basically it's the same thing, you set up repeaters instead of where the blocks are. And that way you can control how much you want each pulse to be and how long the actual delay is. But that's about it guys, I mean, that, redstone is not that complicated, I mean it can get very complicated if you want it to be, um, but that's about it. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this, hope maybe you learned something, if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask, you know, leave it in the comments and I'll, I'll answer it for sure. But uh, do, download the world, just walk around, check it out, and uh, maybe you'll learn something. Hopefully you'll learn something, and uh, if you have any suggestions or whatever, I'm always up for learning something. I'm not an expert. I've just I'm doing all this by memory, so if I got something wrong, I apologize. But hopefully, like I said, this is uh, at least useful to you guys, so you can see this and kind of give you some examples and some ideas of how to do this. Now, all of this redstone stuff, basically, you could build all of this underground. So, all of your little devices could be hidden, and that's what a lot of people do. Once you get the basics of actually how to wire it, then you can start putting it underground and make it hidden so that you can make your little hidden doors and uh, uh, trap doors and stuff so that you have to hit a certain button combination for it to open. In the meantime, um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. And um, that's about it. So, you guys have a good one, and I will talk to you later.